large amplitude moment, then grade 3, large amplitude moment, 50% into the resistance, 50% out of the resistance, grade 4, deep into the barrier, deep into the paraphysiological space, and then grade 5. Okay? So, see here once again, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, and then grade 5. For these prolapses, for these prolapses, what we do, we give central peak light with a bit of extension, with a bit of extension, okay? And then there is a bit of extension here, so in like this, just imagine, what is that some noise? Please don't disturb the tensibility of uh, the structures there. <laughs> We are going to give mobilization for L5 and give a thrust, it is going to pull the disc in. Correct? So, so to the segment, to the segment, we put it in extension position, we mobilize with the thrust. Along with that, we facilitate, we facilitate this extension. Okay? So, PC form, central PA lines for the lumbar spine I demonstrated, lateral PA line. Lateral PA line. Next is lateral PA line. Okay. From the spinous process, from the spinous process, one inch lateral. Spinous process, one inch lateral. You can palpate for the passenger. Spinous process, one inch lateral. You can palpate for the passenger. Passenger. Already I told you how to do the passive joint examination or compression pattern. What is the compression pattern? Very good. Extension, she said extension, compression pattern for right side support. Extension, side flexion to for right side, for right side. Side flexion to right side. Right side. Very good. You have learned nicely. Okay. So, keep up. Two, three, four. If you have got a passive involvement, this is the last and final examination phase. And last part of examination and first part of treatment. Sometimes with the examination itself, the pain will go. You are telling me, sir, I have back pain. Telling the rest, I am getting the pain. Okay. Already I showed you the slide. Uh, one slide over there, but anyhow, now you see. PPI base. Mid finger is placed in the interspinal space. Is there place? L4, L5 junction, okay? Mid finger interspinal space. Index in finger of the facet. From the spinal process, how much lateral? From the spinal. Come on, Mr. From the spinal process, the last part. Spinal process, facet, how much lateral? From the spinal. From the spinal process, one inch lateral is the quick time. What is it? That's it, that's it. process is further Transverse process, index, ring finger of the facet, okay? PPA VMs. The support. Slightly support and flexing. With flexion, the joint opens up. Extension, the joint approximates. Lateral flexion, you hold it above the ankle, okay? Lift it up. Lateral flexion, same side approximation, opposite side opening up. Then rotation from the GT. GT along the long axis of DMR. Apply the force. Okay? Rotation. Supported side, supported side approximates. Non-supported side opens up. Now, this is the asset joint. Affected side is kept up. Say, I have to manipulate. Now, left side L3, L4. Okay? Left side L3, L4. I have to see the number of levels is applicable. First, so that spine is spread, iliac is L4, L5, right, I, I located to the segments, already told you the palpation, inferiorly went to, below that is L3, so I am manipulating say that the involvement of L3, L4 facet, affected left side, left side is kept up, index lead finger on the facet, so, I have to just adjust the device from the upper top. Otherwise, you don't do anything. You know, you do anything with Mr. Okay. Now, I just adjusted the movement to that segment. 
I am just taking it for the rotation, going to the barrier and give it thrust. Anterior lateral. Give the glide, anterior lateral. Okay? Because that is the orientation of the joint. Give the base. Do you want to give a thrust manipulation? SI joint? PC pump over the PSIS? Knees flexed? It is taken for extension? Adduction. Extension, adduction. Go to the barrier and give a thrust. The direction of thrust? Anterior, superior and lateral. Primarily used, primarily used for, for posterior rotated dysfunction. Posterior rotation dysfunction is there. That is what is the plant back. Plant back, it is of this point also, because we are introducing extents. Okay, Dr. Subhanda. Quick, 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 quick. For upslip, that was the management for posterior rotation dysfunction. Now what happens? Knee is always in the spine position. Hip joint, femoral head, pull the acetabula. Mark split is getting correct. Okay? Now coming to anterior rotation dysfunction. What is anterior rotation dysfunction? Very common. I talked about the Create convexity in the side of involvement. Create convexity in the side of involvement. See, please don't do anything because I am telling you repeated. You are not a very good model. I am sorry. Convexity is created, rotate the trunk to the opposite side, okay? This is from which here, inferior to ASI. Go to the barrier and give a thrust. Give a thrust, okay? So this is the manipulation for anterior rotation dysfunction. Then, group line position. Come group, group. Group line. Group line. This is group line. And another position of the study. Now forearm, it's kept at the distal posterior aspect of the thigh. MET for anterior rotation dysfunction. I think this curve can move a little back. But I mean, I know you are very fond of seeing a demonstration. And she's very good in recording. <laughs> Why do we can be there only? Forearm, huh? press now, press. Down, 30% effort, 30%. Okay, that much. Okay, fine. Hold, hold. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six to ten seconds, repeat for six to ten times, okay? Now, gluteus maximus is pulling the inner million for posterior rotation. Anterior rotation is going to get correct. Correct? Come to front. line, front line. I have exactly two more minutes, okay? So, last demonstration. Piriformis syndrome. You can visit to my YouTube channel, you can subscribe. I have worked here to 25 lakhs viewers for my videos. If you find that you can try to show more, or more single more, you can try to join. You can join to our Instagram account, the Insta videos, professional things. We always update you can. And this of this video, three for me, is a popular video across the world. So you can see it is updated nearly 1870, 18 years back, 2006, 18 years back. Okay. So three for me. It's a PR cell muscle, attaching from, from sacrum, lesser here to touch, getting adapted to the GT. Anterior to the piriformis muscle, we have which nerve? Sciatica. So now we can compress, leading to sciatica. And people, patients are very fascinated about sciatica. They come and doctor. They are so fascinated. They love the word sciatica. Okay. But CRT is nothing but a translation of the terminal of the third electron. It's not a right now, right? Okay, so now, piriformis syndrome, okay? How to identify? Piriformis is the next piece, and we take it for internal location. So right side is going to this and left side to this. That means left side there is tightness, okay? Now, now, how to palpate for the piriformis muscle then? Join, join, one line from ASIS to Ischia Fibrosis, ASIS to Ischia Fibrosis. Another line from BSIS to GT, ASIS, Ischia Fibrosis, BSIS to GT. That intersecting point is the landmark for the information. You palpate and then it's done. This is exactly the deep end of the superior, deep end of the superior. ASIS, Ischia Fibrosis, 
this is joint this two lines and this is the point. Okay? Now, <coughs> go to the barrier, ask the person to bring the foot to the middle. Okay? Bring. Bring the foot to the middle. Give only 30 pounds of force. Okay? Bring. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Relax. Come to the new position. Bring it. Bring. Walk to the middle. Come on, bring. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Relax. Come to the new position. Bring it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Relax. Now four level uh, stenosis, this is three, four, two, three, three, four, four, five, this one. All the four level uh, stenosis along with the disc. So two, three, three, four, four, uh, uh, four, five. So without uh, removing the complete flap, we just replace it in the after the surgery. After the disc is coming, we are putting flap, that flap on flap back to its original position. We got the midline, the 11 number plate. Please put your hands together, audience. Please put your hands together as I invite on the dais Dr. Raj Lakshmi Panigram.
in the admission in the ICU, he was having he act, uh, he actually in this video he was explaining his uh, experiences means his physical disability. He was many part of the uh, country even in our Odisha. Uh, many occupational therapists are not available, so everyone should have a um, basic understanding of uh, different approach. And one such approach is sensory integration. And uh, many of us are now uh, serving in social emotional problems and all is one high activity level. Either high act activity level, overactivity or lethargy. Next slide. Processing the sensory world differently. Having sensory difference is more than just having... So we should know at the right time to apply electrotherapy and what parameters to be selected. So we should, when the patient comes to us, we should do a clinical reasoning. I will give two examples, then I will proceed first. One day, a stroke patient, a stroke patient's wife came to me and said, Sir, I want to have one FPS, functional electrical stimulator for my husband. And I discussed with the auto work people, I came to know the cost was 2.3 lakh, something like that. So I thought several times, what to do? I never advised, but she came to me for opinion. Of course, your, her husband was my patient only, no doubt. So, I decided not to go for FPS. You know, FPS, which we discussed, also on the recent te advanced technology that we videos, we use. The question is, why didn't I, why didn't I recommend for FPS? I thought several times, and I used Faradic re-education to see FPS, the two types of APS we make use, one is called therapeutic APS, second is called functional APS. So I said, Madam, I am using therapeutic APS along with my radiation exercises. I am applying thyroid stimulation to the reflexors. I am sure your husband will be able to clear the ground in the swing phase. You know, in the stroke patients, the most challenging problem occurs in the swing phase of gait. Right? 
gentleman could work without orthosis, without APS, after a long course of therapy. Right? So friends, we have to we have to do a clinical reasoning. We have to think a moment about the patient. What strategy is really going to help? One more example I tell you, friend. One day, a MA Hindi student was brought to me by her father. And she had wrist drop. She had an abscess in the Ajira. And what happened? After the shotgun drained the abscess, she developed wrist drop. Now I continue with my therapy, you know, in case of wrist drop, you have to pay for her injury. We have to maintain the range of motion and we have to maintain the muscle properties. Muscle properties are maintained by regular exercises, little massage and dumbbell stimulation. So I continue. Months passed, months passed. Two months, three months, she did get recovery. One day her father shouted at me and started to uh, indirectly scold me, I would say. But I said, sir, I am confident your doctor is going to regain her wrist extension. So friend, how I am confident? Because I was doing a reasoning. I was thinking critically. Right? What is happening to the growth of the nerve? I was checking the thinner side. But I was stimulating the muscles periodically, not regularly. Right? I have demonstrated the exercise program. So friends, then after one month, the mother said that surgeon has recommended for tendon transfer. I said no, no. See, you saw that confidence. That is possible if you think about your patient for a moment. I said no, I am not agree. Why I said no? I explained. If you are subjecting your daughter to tendon transfer, see, there will be a scar. Tendon transfer going to be done? Where there is no scope of recovery, but here there is scope of recovery. So, how to go for tendon transfer? So, friend, he took clearly, I remember, four to five months to regain the wrist extension. So, friend, one fine day, that girl came with the father and showed me wrist extension. So, that, see, why I am telling we should see, we should, as a clinician, as a professional, with master, for, on our graduation, BPT, MPT, we should do a reasoning, that is most important. So do the reasoning, select the intervention correctly, and work, and you will get the success. So friends, you know very well, reasoning is a cognitive process by which the information contained in the clinical case or situation is synthesized, integrated with the clinician's knowledge and experience, and used to diagnose and manage patient problem. So our experience matter, right? And while reasoning, while doing a reasoning and taking a decision, we have to your experience. Just one month back, one patient who came from Rajasthan Kota, her husband ran before me requesting for APS. She has significant spastic in the plant of Texas. She, whenever he saw me, sir, what about the APS, what about the APS, sir, I said, sir, I am not very confident. I will ask the person to come. They will, they will make a demonstration. Then the person got present. What my experience says, your wife is not going to be benefited by APS, particularly functional APS, but therapeutic APS, yes. So friends, I did go for APS, but I continued with therapeutic APS. So whenever we see a patient, whether you are planning a therapy or electrotherapy, so please do a reasoning, consider the patient situation, collect user information, process the information. Very important point, but process the information because we are clinicians, right? Then we have to identify the problems, establish goal. We should establish goal. My goal is to achieve risk extension. My goal is to achieve risk to anti So establish the goal, then take action. Very important point. Taking action or planning strategy is very, very important. So, to my students, my juniors, I will appeal, physiotherapy can achieve a lot, lot. 
physiotherapy in the natural lot, whether it is orthopedic disorders or neurological diseases, disorders, we can actually learn to fight it. We identify the problems properly, establish the goal properly. Without a goal, you cannot achieve your objective. Set a goal, then take proper action and we have to evaluate. We have to evaluate. Friends, whenever we see patient, in the evening hours, we evaluate. Our mind evaluates how successfully, how successfully I treat my patient. See, patient will come with the passive mind stimulation or dance, uh, IFT or something, right? Patient will go. But, you know, I clinically am going to evaluate how effectively I have advised. I have decided strategy for the patient and what is going to outcome, whether my strategy needs to be modified, that all to be done through the reasoning. Just like this. All you know, we have to do critical thinking, you know, critical thinking is nothing but evidence-based analysis of science and knowledge, then in reasoning, synthesis of knowledge and experience in the application of critical thinking to the clinical situation, diagnosis, that's reasoning that is critical to the clinical diagnosis and determining relevant management of the problems, judgment, actionable outcomes of the critical thinking, clinical reasoning and situational awareness. So these are the processes of clinical reasoning. So the message I want to tell, Whenever you see a patient, think what evidence says. What evidence has to be respected. Don't do something without the evidence. Right? And after thinking, you synthesize the knowledge, what you are going to do, right? Then you plan the management and ultimately you will be able to get the outcome. Let's reach, let's reach. All of us know electrotherapy. You know, electrotherapy we all are using. Sometimes people tell, apply it. Let's see. You know, we know very well, electrotherapy is a part of physiotherapy that we all know. We have been using electrotherapy since quite past. Let's reach. So friends, one thing I tell you, already we know electrotherapy that we are using today should be evidence based. And if you see nowadays many countries, yes please, many countries, they are, they are, you know, they are provision or they are following not to use some modalities. If you see continuous pulse rate, continuous sarcoidotomy. Many countries are not using continuous sarcoidotomy. But yes, continuous sarcoidotomy. There is a thought behind that. You know, when you apply continuous sarcoidotomy, you are directly applying high intensity energy to the tissue. The current concept is micro current, of small energy. So instead of continuous diathermy, now people are preferring all structural diathermy. But even though some professionals are not using continuous diathermy in their routine practice, but this morality has its own value. You cannot fully ignore it. So you know very well, all structural diathermy, when applied, it stimulates the endogenous systems of the body. You know, pulse shortwave, the energy, energy will work on the cell membrane, it will promote some kind of metabolism, something like that. But when you apply continuous autoratherm, autoratherm, besides the cellular metabolism, it has a heating effect and the heat itself has an effect on pain modulation. Heat will remove noxious metabolites. So friends, we have to decide, though evidence is there, some countries, and some, some slides are there, can you go back just like this? Just like this? In, 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 in electrotherapy, to reduce ultrasound treatment, those are significantly lower nowadays. We are using more of pulse mode than previously thought to be effective. Pulse and diatomy employs power levels, which are several orders of magnitude lower than 
दोन आपल्या डुईंग करतो सगळे पण मी लेजर वेअर युजिंग वी आर युजिंग लो इंटरेस्ट लेजर अगेन फ्रेंड हाय इंटरेस्ट लेजर आल्सो हैज कम राइट सो दो देयर आर कंट्रोवर्सी दो देयर आर सी समटाइम्स वी फाइंड समटाइम्स यू फाइंड द लिटरेचर ऑफ जर्नल्स चॉकलेट खाना अच्छा है चॉकलेट खाना बुरा है राइट व्हाट आर द क्लिनिशियन यू टू डिसाइड व्हदर टू अप्लाई कंटीन्यूअस मोड और पॉज मोड बट द करेक्ट थॉट इज नॉट टू नॉट टू डायरेक्टली स्ट्रेस द टिश्यू एंड प्रेफरेबली पीपल आर फोकसिंग ऑन लो इंटेंसिटी मोडालिटीज लाइक पॉज अल्ट्रासाउंड लो इंटेंसिटी लेजर पॉज सर्वोडायथर्मी एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा दिस थिंग प्रेजेंटेशन आज कंपेयर टू सुपरविजन दी दिस प्लीज क्रायोथेरेपी फ्रेंड्स क्रायोथेरेपी इज अ वेरी गुड अगेन टेक्निक राइट वी शुड नो गोइंग टू गो फॉर क्रायोथेरेपी व्हाट मेथड शुड सिलेक्ट हाउ लॉन्ग शुड वी इफ यू अप्लाई कोल्ड फॉर मोर देन 20 मिनट्स राइट पेशेंट्स मे विल हैव इंक्रीज्ड सर्कुलेशन the swelling may increase sometimes they also they have got chill bone right cone also for this ulceration you should if the patient comes with acute trauma acute trauma then we should advise for cryotherapy for the code after the duration should be limited to 10 to 20 minutes and when you select cryotherapy preferably in the patient they have some cardiac issue Never go for cryotherapy to the left shoulder. Just now I got a phone call. Before we apply, sometimes you can you can make a trial also. You see which model is giving better result. That also you can decide. But usually for long term, long lasting pain, you have to go for pains. Localized pain and swelling, preferably we go for IFT. Friends, I am a stroke patient. He had trigeminal neuralgia. The moment I will make him walk, you stop. Moment I he walks, you will tell sir, I will not walk. See if you have pain in my face. So I thought, what can be done? I advise for lidocaine. Lidocaine apply for solo. But after some time again, the pain is there. So then what I thought, what to do? I requested his wife to go for a pocket tens. Pocket tens. You know nowadays he let the tens. मशीन सर अवेलेबल है नी इलेक्ट्रोड सर आरएस इलेक्ट्रोड्स लगा दे आरएस इलेक्ट्रोड राइट दस लाइक यू नो ए पेशेंट वर्किंग इन द हॉस्पिटल कॉरिडोर विथ ए यूरो बैग आई थॉट हेल्प बाय द केयर नी वर और टाइप टू वेस्ट सो आई मेड यू वर्क विथ द ऑक्सीजन सटर टू दी इलेक्ट्रोड सटर टू फेस एंड द मशीन आई थॉट हेल्प बाय मी और हेल्प इन द पेशेंट्स पॉकेट राइट सो आई थॉट अचीव सक्सेसफुल Get yeah, under his pain. Whenever I I told whenever you receive your pain at home, other other time also you apply the tens also. So friends, we have to do reasoning and decide whatever tens you are going to do next week. Are you discussed? The from IIT here, yeah? and then the middle one that is the orthotic insole for back feet uh, that is developed by me and my team. Uh, this is already uh, taken by the Tata Steel, and this is meta material insole. Not a single material is. Uh, Included here. We are using meta material. Okay. I think. Uh, <laughs> Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences, University of Hyderabad, Telangana. So she has developed an innovative technique for the management of idiopathic scoliosis correlating with linkage classification. She also has a paper published in the Frontier Journal of Rehabilitation Science. for muscular skeletal conditions in 2023 jagannath subha parana uh, i would like to thank you all the organizers uh, because they have given me opportunity to speak on this platform so today i would like to speak about scoliosis so scoliosis uh, you might have uh, uh, already heard scoliosis it is also uh, like uh, in ancient literature we have heard lord krishna how he corrected uh, kubja with uh, uh, mentioned in ancient literature also so scoliosis uh, please start the uh, if we uh, 
considered as scoliosis. So scoliosis, there are different types of scoliosis. So first, uh, like uh, we consider uh, today, my topic is idiopathic scoliosis. Scoliosis can occur due to congenital regions like uh, hemivertebra, or uh, it can also occur due to block vertebra or uh, butterfly vertebra or uh, uh, there can be uh, wedge vertebra which can cause scoliosis and also neuromuscular uh, causes of scoliosis are also there neuromuscular causes like spina bifida cerebral palsy muscular dystrophy they also can cause scoliosis but uh, uh, here my topic is idiopathic scoliosis. Idiopathic scoliosis is the most common among all the scoliosis. Like 80% of the total scoliosis are uh, idiopathic. And among idiopathic there are infantile and uh, juvenile and uh, adolescent. Infantile till the 3 years of age and uh, juvenile occurs uh, the 4 to 9 years and uh, 10 years to 16 years is the adolescent variety. So adolescent, though it can be applied for all types of scoliosis. So during my research uh, for PhD, I have developed uh, this innovative technique uh, uh, which is named as biomechanically designed cost specific corrective exercise. Uh, why this is biomechanically designed? Because if you uh, don't know the biomechanics of scoliosis, we cannot correct the curve. So first of all, we should know the biomechanics of the uh, scoliosis. Next uh, slide. So scoliosis uh, is being defined by the Scoliosis Research Society as a 10 degree of lateral curvature uh, in the frontal plane. Top angle should be 10 degree or more, then only it is called as uh, scoliosis. The prevalence of, uh, already I have discussed, and females are more prone to develop idiopathic scoliosis and they will have more progression and uh, they will have a bigger curve. Because uh, usually females, there are certain factors why the scoliosis is more common in females because of the uh, hormonal factors, because of the ligament laxity, the females are more prone for idiopathic scoliosis. And uh, there is, after elimination of all known causes, suppose uh, we know the congenital uh, scoliosis, and we know the uh, neuromuscular scoliosis, and we know uh, other causes like neurofibromatosis and Marfan syndrome, so collagen disorder linked scoliosis are also there. So after elimination of all these known causes of scoliosis, if first thing uh, we don't find any solid reason for the development of scoliosis, then it is called as idiopathic scoliosis. So uh, idiopathic scoliosis still if we, uh, though the clinical manifestations are not uh, proper, but still uh, like we don't find any solid reasons the etiology, but if we find uh, uh, the clinical uh, uh, clinical aspect, we find there are certain genetic factors and ligament laxity. Some collagen disorders are all, uh, always associated with and nervous abnormality also associated with idiopathic scoliosis. So it is uh, called as multifactorial uh, scoliosis, multifactorial disease. Next slide. So this is a uh, uh, picture of ligament laxity with scoliosis. See how the uh, person with elbow hyperextension uh, is having scoliosis. So usually I have found in my research that uh, uh, idiopathic scoliosis people are having more ligament laxity. The adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, they uh, have a core progression. They uh, get a core progression during the growth time. During the growth time, like uh, usually 10 to um, 16 years, which is the most crucial period of 
growth and progression during that period the uh, car progression occurs the car progresses during the uh, this period 10 to 16 years of age and that is very rapid progression and why that rapid progression occurs during the growth period because there is a very rapid progression of the longitudinal uh, size of the bone which is the axial skeleton the axial skeleton uh, that uh, grows very faster we have the axial skeleton and we have the appendicular skeleton the axial skeleton grows very faster and the muscles they have to uh, remain in contact with the bones so that's why the muscles also grow along with the bones and uh, due to the sudden growth of the muscles the muscles meet the problem of leg tension relationship so they become uh, weak suddenly they become weak because they don't have sufficient strength to meet the longitudinal length suddenly that's why the car progresses during the uh, like growth period growth spot and uh, also the car progresses during the adulthood adulthood why it progresses because of the degeneration because the there are changes in the bone there are changes in the uh, connective tissue the muscles and the annular ligaments the facets so because of the rotation of the vertebra there are changes in the uh, bones also and also connective tissue changes are also there that's why due to degeneration the core progresses during the adulthood but this progression is very less which is only one to two degree per year this progression is very slow but if uh, the curve is bigger then the progression also will be bigger so usually curves uh, more than 30 degree they progress but less than 30 degree curves usually uh, it is uh, evidence that the, uh, the curves which are less than 30 degree they don't progress uh, so why the progression occurs uh, already i told so creep effect creep effect uh, of the connective tissue uh, the bone is also a connective tissue and also the muscle is also a connective tissue so due to the creep effect that means due to the long term stretching of the convex side and concave side contracture due to the creep effect the uh, progression occurs so the bone also becomes uh, wedge and also postural collapse due to muscular deterioration the muscles on the convex side they become stretched and there is a uh, like weakness which develops on the convex side and also the concave side muscles they become contract therapy in scoliosis are therapeutic uh, like it prevents car progression and also corrects the car it should prevent the car progression and also corrects the car and it improves the postural appearance the physical appearance of the aesthetics and also avoiding surgery because the surgery is too much invasive and risky surgery that's why if we can avoid the surgery then it is a very big thing we can do with the exercises and treating spinal pain syndrome and respiratory dysfunction so because of the uh, biomechanical abnormality there is respiratory dysfunction so uh, so we should know something about how to name the curves okay so this is the most uh, common thing we should know so if the curve convexity is towards the left side then we name it as uh, like thoracic left thoracic okay and uh, we how we name it as thoracic and thoracolumbar and lumbar there are also it depends upon the apex of the curve the apex of the curve here the apex of the curve is uh, lying at the level of t8 or t9 in the first uh, x-ray so we say it as thoracic left thoracic on the other side if the the curve is towards the right side so we say it as right thoracic and the other curve which is like lying below that is uh, left lumbar curve because the apex is at the level of L3 
So lumbar uh, cord will be called as uh, it, uh, the cord will be called as lumbar if it is from L1, L2 disc to L4, L4 vertebra. Then we call as lumbar. So what are the type of radiographs which are needed for uh, scoliosis? So in scoliosis we take three types of radiograph. One is uh, whole spine standing x-ray and whole spine lying x-ray and a traction or bending radiograph. So whole spine standing x-ray will show you the all the components. Suppose uh, uh, if we take uh, whole spine standing and the whole spine lying, there will be 10 degree of difference between standing and lying radiograph. Why? Because the standing radiograph, the muscles which are maintaining our erect posture, they are becoming weak in the standing position because they are anti-gravity muscles and they are supporting our posture. And when we come to the lying posture, these muscles, they are not contracting and as a result, the lying radiograph is 10 degree less as compared to the standing radiograph. So that is a uh, very good evidence that we can correct the curve because the muscles are the uh, important uh, things which we want to strengthen. Any type, if the head is not placed over the sacrum, then it is called a decompensated curve or decompensated spine. Okay, and the patient will have balance problems. So, in this figure, the patient's head and C7, C7 vertebra usually is taken as the reference point for measurement of the uh, balance and uh, compensation. So, the C7 spine is not placed over the um, uh, sacrum. That's why it is called a decompensated spine. Okay. So uh, this uh, this one is a uh, thoracic right thoracic with a left lumbar, which is uh, a compensatory curve, and it is a non-structural curve, and uh, the upper one is a structural curve. So how we can call it as a structural, and how we call it as a non-structural curve? So according to the surgical classification, the structural curve is. Uh, a curve, if uh, after giving a traction radiograph, still the curve remains uh, 25 degree or more than that, then we call it as a structural curve. If the curve reduces below 25 degree, then we call it as a non-structural curve. So, in this uh, uh, diagram, the first uh, curve, the primary curve is 38.8 degree curve angle and the compensatory curve is 17.9 degree. So 17.9 degree, that is a compensatory curve, a non-structural curve, and the upper one is a structural curve. But uh, usually, after giving a traction radiograph only, we can say this as a structural curve or a non-structural curve, as per the classification. The patient here is having a left thoracic curvature left to the left side. See, I will say the classification, lengthy classification. This lengthy classification was developed by a physician. His name is Lenky and he is still alive. And uh, he has developed this classification for surgical correction. But uh, we, uh, like as a physiotherapist, we don't have any such uh, uh, good therapeutic exercise till date which can correct the scoliosis because uh, there are Scroth methods, there are Seize methods, there are Lyons methods, there are seven major schools which have developed for correction of uh, scoliosis but after one or two year of continuous therapy still we get only five degree of correction, less than five degree of correction which is within the measurement error. So that's why uh, it, uh, exercise therapy is still considered as ineffective in the management of idiopathic scoliosis. But I have developed this technique and I have uh, applied this technique on my patient 
and uh, I have taken 24 patients and in all 24 patients like uh, they were from uh, 11 years to 40, uh, 33 years and I have got improvement in all patients. So I will tell you how the correction should be done. Okay. So this is uh, Lenke 1. As for Lenke classification, there are six uh, types of scoliosis. And this is for idiopathic scoliosis. Okay, so this idiopathic scoliosis, Lenke 1, first one is, uh, uh, there will be a, uh, that is called thoracic major, major thoracic. Means you will have a uh, major curve in the thoracic region that extends from T2 to T2. T, uh, 11 to 12 disc that is called as thoracic so uh, this lengthy one classification is uh, first thoracic major thoracic then lengthy two is double thoracic there will be two thoracic curves and uh, see there is a uh, curve in the upper thoracic uh, to the left side and there is a curve in the uh, right side also to the right side, right thoracic. So because there are two thoracic curves, that's why it is called uh, double thoracic. So lengthy two is a double thoracic curve. Uh, the third one is lengthy three, and uh, lengthy three is uh, double major. Double major, it will have a major curve in the thoracic region, and it will have another major curve either in the thoracolumbar or lumbar region. So that is called double major curve. So there will be two major curves. That means after giving traction, radio, uh, traction, uh, traction, the radiograph will measure more than 25 degree for both the curves. So that's why it is called double major. Then lengthy 4 is a triple major. So there will be three curves. So see in this figure, there are three curves, uh, uh, but uh, actually he is having four curves. So one is in the cervical thoracic region and another in the thoracic region and another in the lumbar region. So there are triple major curves. And lengthy 5 is a thoracolumbar, single thoracolumbar, which is a structural curve. And uh, the compensatory curves, which are above and below, they are non-structural curves. So uh, compensatory curves always develop above the structural curve to bring the head just on the sacrum. So that's why the compensatory curves they develop. So usually the uh, compensatory curves, they remain non-structural and in due course they also become structural. If they become, a, uh, like they don't get any treatment, uh, so they also become structural curves. And they become major curves. Uh, this one is lengthy 6 and uh, lengthy 6 is a, also a double major curve but in this uh, lengthy 6 the thoracolumbar or lumbar curve will be greater than the thoracic curve. In double major curve the thoracic curve will be greater than the lumbar but here the lumbar curve will be greater than the thoracic curve. That's why it is called uh, uh, lengthy 6. So it is a uh, slightly different from lengthy 3. So now coming to the clinical biomechanics of idiopathic scoliosis. So uh, as we know that scoliosis develops and the clinical manifestation of uh, idiopathic scoliosis are like there will be a lateral curvature, we can see the lateral curvature in the, uh, if we make the patient stand, we can see the lateral curvature. So that is the clinical manifestation and we can see the pelvic obliquity and we can excite and on the concave side, the uh, ribs they go forward, okay? And the scapula sits over the rib hump. That's why the scapula goes higher. And we get a high shoulder on the convex side. And on the concave side, because there is no support, the ribs they go forward. That's why the shoulder comes down, the sacs down. So, uh, usually the clinical manifestation, what we get in uh, scoliosis, uh, like that is the uh, explanation of the biomechanics. So, there is a, uh, whatever picture we get, the uh, frontal uh, uh, curvature of uh, uh, 10 degree or more uh, and uh, also we get some other clinical pictures 
uh, like radiological changes that is in the sagittal plane okay so transverse plane there is a rotation and uh, due to the rotation we get the frontal plane abnormality the deformity and the there is also sagittal plane abnormality that is the normal appearance of the thoracic kyphosis and lumbar lordosis like uh, in anterior posterior uh, uh, plane we, if we see we have a normal anterior posterior curve which is uh, thoracic uh, convexity and lumbar concavity so that is uh, thoracic kyphosis and lumbar lordosis so in uh, scoliosis there is a reduction of thoracic kyphosis that means thoracic curvature become hypokyphotic uh, like uh, normal thoracic kyphosis is 10 degree to 40 degree and lumbar lordosis is 40 degree to uh, 60 degree that is the normal lumbar lordosis but in this case we have found that the thoracic kyphosis is very less and uh, in the other picture the thoracic kyphosis is 5.8 degree so it is below 10 degree so uh, due to the sagittal plane uh, reduction of the thoracic kyphosis uh, this changes occur so this uh, sagittal plane abnormality uh, reduces the patient's uh, ability to absorb the shock if your uh, spine will not have normal curvature then our spine loses the ability to absorb the shock okay so whenever there is a pain back pain the usually the uh, lumbar lordosis obliterates the lumbar lordosis decreases and the reduction in the lumbar lordosis uh, reduces the ability to absorb the shock and the patient's uh, tolerance to pain also increases and the degenerative changes also will be more if uh, the normal uh, anterior posterior curves are not present so uh, you can see the So the implications of uh, asymmetrical deformity, what are the implications, what are the uh, problems clinically, what they will have because uh, already I have told there will be a high shoulder due to the rib hump, the scapula sits on the rib hump and there will be a high shoulder and uh, concavity side the ribs they push forward and the uh, shoulder sacks downward and uh, the facet joints on the convex side they get compressed and uh, there will be facet joint compression and the nuclei and annular ligament also there will be a change in the bone shape so this change in the bone shape is like one side uh, uh, the convex side there will be bulging and the concave side there will be thinning so that change will uh, give rise to a structural change to the scoliosis so after that it becomes very difficult to reduce the curve Okay. So, if you uh, take a plumb line, uh, draw the plumb line from C7 vertebra and uh, uh, hang it downwards, usually the C7 vertebra should be uh, over the sacrum. So, that is the normal balance. But in uh, scoliosis, what happens? The uh, uh, Because there is a lateral curvature, see the plumb line. Uh, is not uh, in the midline and also the, there is a lateral curvature so what happens the line of gravity that is shifted to the concave side okay the normal line of gravity means the gravitational torque is shifted to the concave side and as a result the convex side muscles the muscles on the convex side they have to counteract the uh, gravitational torque so in order to counteract the gravitational torque the convex side muscles they uh, uh, overact they become hypertonic and because they are overstretched so they lose their ability to create enough tension and as a result they become hypertonic and fibrotic and painful so on the convex side we will find painful muscular bands myofascial bands on the convex side and usually that is the uh, major management in scoliosis if you can treat the myofascial bands then we can uh, activate the deep muscles
Okay. Uh, on the third picture, you see the shoulder has gone forward on the concave side, so the shoulder is sagging downwards. So there is a change in the sagittal alignment. Already I told. So it is a three-dimensional abnormality, not oh. only a frontal plane abnormality, oh. but also sagittal plane and transverse plane abnormalities are up there. So this pelvic obliquity picture. I, uh, this picture you see the there is a lumbar convexity towards the left side. So because the lumbar uh, rotation also occurs towards posteriorly towards the left side. So due to the connection of the iliolumbar ligament, there is a ligament called iliolumbar ligament which connects the lumbar vertebra to the uh, deformity because of the deformity because of the rotation. The muscles are attached to the bones and the orientation of the muscles get changed and their length tension relationship also becomes changed. So some muscles become tight and some muscles become weak due to the position and due to overactivity, due to overactivity and uh, due to uh, like hyperactivity, some muscles become hypotonic and fibrotic. Okay. So usually the upper trapezius tightness occurs on the convex side of the thoracic which is higher. We find the upper trapezius tightness and also we find lower trapezius and serratus anterior weakness. So we find the winging of scapula on the uh, higher side. On the thoracic convex side we find uh, lower trapezius and serratus anterior weakness. Lumbar concave side we find the quadratus lumbarum tightness and tension fascia lata and hamstring tightness because one side innominate goes down and the other uh, side innominate goes from. They are there to assess the growth potential. So if the, uh, there is still some potential for growth, then we say that the patient uh, will have more bar progression. That's why uh, the exercise management must be very vigorous and the calf type so what is the calf type that also you have to assess and accordingly only you have to give the calf specific corrective exercises because whatever exercises we design for idiopathic scoliosis that cannot be applied to all calf types because the calf types are different and the exercises for different calf types are also different uh, technique to stabilize the curve. If we can stabilize the curve by stretching, strengthening, we give enough stretching and strengthening. So we give some joint play, we give some flexibility to the curve. Then if we can stabilize the curve by activating the deep muscles, we can stabilize the curve. So that is the main theme of my uh, protocol. So the problem list, uh, like there will be uh, reduced aesthetics, the physical appearance will be very bad. So that is the most uh, important problem why the patient comes to physiotherapy department. And also there will be pain, spinal pain syndrome and uh, reduced fitness also will be there, respiratory function, any fixed object you can push on this side and create contraction of the uh, convex side muscles. Okay, so he can contract the convex side muscle. So the convex side muscles will get, uh, like this side muscles will get stretched, the concave side, and convex side muscles also due to stretching, they will come into the, their, uh, 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 like, uh, corrected length tension position. And when they will contract, they will contract for, from a corrected length tension position. So they will elicit proper tension because a stretch muscle cannot elicit proper tension. Okay, if you see the length tension relationship of muscle, a stretch muscle cannot elicit optimal tension. Only a muscle can develop optimal tension when it is in a optimal position, optimal length. So, if we stretch the muscle on the concave side, the convex side muscle will come into there uh, original position and they develop optimal tension. So you have to keep this up and this side you have to keep down. Okay? And this hand also can
can be kept from because they have come for back side. On the convex side, they usually come back. That's why you can keep it from. And this side you can keep more back because they have come forward in the transverse plane on this side. Okay. So the pelvic obliquity correction, then the thoracic curve correction, and he can contract the muscles on this side and keep the contraction for one to two minutes and breathe in and out. Okay. So this is only for stretching the paraspinal muscles and uh, creating a optimal tension. Okay. This is a calf specific corrective exercise in the sitting position. Again, you can give the calf specific corrective exercise in the lying position. You, you have to start from the lying position because in lying position the calf corrects. Corrects 10 degree. In the sitting position, again the calf will be better than the lying position because it is a erect position. So erect position your calf will increase 10 degree. So if you give the exercise in the lying position, then it will be more effective initially. Then you can come to sitting position. Then you can go to the standing position. Standing position, calf specific corrective exercise, I will show you the picture. I will show you the picture or else uh, uh, like here there is no fixed object. Otherwise I would have shown.
like to extend a note of appreciation for Sami Lalo Nepani Guru Papa Sam. Any volunteers can come up. Thank you. 